Hi and welcome back to MRTV. You're in the market for a new VR headset and you are sure you're going to get this year the Valve Index. But then last week it happens, HP announces the HP Reverb G2. Now this headset is $400 cheaper, it has a high resolution and probably now you're wondering, hey, probably this is good enough for you and you're not sure which one to get. In this video, I'm going to tell you all the similarities, but more importantly, all the differences between the two headsets so that you can make an educated purchasing decision. And all of this goodness is coming up. Welcome back again to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang and this channel is all about virtual reality. I'm bringing you unbiased and honest reviews of all the VR headsets, of all the VR accessories and you're getting the latest news. So if you're interested in virtual reality then absolutely subscribe to this channel and click on the bell button so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. All right, so you're in the market for a new VR headset. You want to get the Valve Index, which is an amazing headset, actually my daily driver. And now HP announces the HP Reverb G2, this headset here, which is the successor of this headset here, the original HP Reverb. This headset was very much liked by the sim community because of its high resolution, but it did have some problems. And actually the G2 addresses these problems and fixes them. So let's talk a moment about the HP Reverb G2. The HP Reverb G2 is going to set you back $599. It still comes with a very high 2160 times 2160 pixels per eye displays, but this time, according to HP, the displays have been improved. Before, there was a problem of perceived Mura, something that would jerk you out of immersion, but this time this problem has been fixed. Also, the contrasts are supposed to be better and the brightness is going to be higher. The new G2 also comes with a manual IPD slider, something that's really important for people who don't have the average of 64 millimeters IPD into papillary distance, the distance between your eyes. This is also supposed to help with the FOV, which is still supposed to be 114 degrees. This time, thanks to the IPD slider, more people will be able to see that full 114 degrees IPD according to HP. The new headset also comes with improved tracking. It's still inside out tracking, but this time with four cameras as compared to the two cameras of the original G1. And we also have improved controllers, which now come with button parity to the Oculus Touch controllers. Also in the audio department, now we have the Valve Index headphones. So therefore we should have really good audio with the G2. All right, so now that you have a general idea about the G2, let's compare it with the Valve Index. And let's start with the price. So. The Valve Index, you're going to have to pay $999 for the full set, including the base stations and the controllers. So if you're new to VR and if you did not have the Vive or the Vive Pro with those base stations, then you will need to go for the full set for $999. If you already have the base stations and the controllers, then you can also just go for the headset itself. And this is going to set you back $499. But most probably you will want to also get the controllers, the Valve Index controllers. So the package of just the Valve Index and the controllers is going to set you back $799. So for the G2, and well, I'm going to use this old uh, G1 now to show you. For the G2, it's going to set you back $599. But this already includes everything that you need. You don't need base stations with this device. And we're going to get to the tracking in a moment. So with $599, you get everything that you need. You get the controllers, you don't need any base stations and you're good to go. So it's $599 versus $999. So in this respect, the G2 definitely wins. Let's get to one of the main differences between the Valve Index and the Reverb G2 and that is tracking. The Valve Index uses the so-called Steam VR Lighthouse tracking and that is simply the best tracking that's on the market. How does it work? Well, you have to set up 
two base stations in your room and these base stations send out lasers and according to these lasers the headset can track itself in space and the same also for the controllers. This method of tracking is extremely good and well even if your controllers are behind your back these will still be tracked so this is the most precise tracking that's out there on the market but well on the flip side well it is kind of um, stationary the, those base stations they will be in your in in that play area and if you want to go over to a friend for example it's going to be very complicated to bring it to that friend so it also has some downsides now for the g2 it uses inside out tracking so you have two cameras here and the, G, the g2 also has two cameras here on the side you can see it here and according to these cameras the device can track itself in space and it also can track the controllers in space that does have some advantages but also some disadvantages so first of all the advantage it's easy to bring this to a friend you can simply yeah bring this anywhere simply bring your laptop and then you can use your vr system anywhere you want to so that is definitely great also for um, the general tracking is it good or bad actually the windows mixed reality tracking with those two cameras it was way better than many people said and i showed that in several videos over and over and actually you can have a look at the tracking of the original g1 here my assumption here is that the tracking of the g2 is going to be really good and most probably on par with the rift s and the oculus quest anyways it's not going to be as good as the tracking of the valve index because if you do something like this where your controller is behind your back it won't be tracked anymore but well in most of the cases i don't think that you're going to use your controller behind your back but still i want to let you know of that disadvantage so overall in this in this area the valve index definitely is better next let's talk about the picture quality of course really important for lots of you how does actually the virtual world look like when you're in any of these two headsets and well i haven't looked through the g2 so i can't tell but i can tell you how the picture quality of the g1 was and i simply assume now that what hp told me is true and that they have fixed the problems of these perceived mura so overall I believe that the picture quality will be better with the G2. We have the high resolution, we have 2160 pixels times 2160 pixels per eye and well for the Valve Index we have 1600 times 1440 pixels per eye and that resolution is even spread over a wider FOV here with the Valve Index. So therefore the picture quality is definitely going to be sharper with the g2 and for people who want to have the sharpest image for example in simulations where you need to read the gauges most probably that will be more important for you guys next let's talk about the lenses here for the valve index we have some kind of double lenses that is good for the fov you have a pretty good fov here bigger than with the hp reverb and the hp reverb g2 but that also introduces a little glare problem these god rays and lots of people actually are not happy with the god rays of the valve index i must say for me it's not a big problem because you will only see them in a few scenes where you have like white text over a black background but in the normal gameplay you normally won't see it but according to hp you won't have this problem here as as strongly as with the valve index and also with the first version of the reverb i didn't have this problem at all so if you don't like god rays probably this might be a better choice here the the reverb g2 and another uh, advantage for the Valve Index though is the high refresh rate. Th these displays can go up to 144 hertz while the G2 can only do 90 hertz. And I think you will be able to see the difference between 90 hertz and 144 hertz. But well, that's always up to you. 90 hertz is actually totally fine 
for most of the cases. Now, I had already mentioned the FOV and the FOV is really important for lots of people. The FOV is the field of view. What is the angle like of the things that you see in virtual reality? Is it more like this or is it more like this? And in this respect, the Valve Index is the clear winner. This here has 135 degrees FOV versus around 114 degrees with the Reverb and the Reverb G2. So that is definitely um, a difference and it really is up to you. What is more important for you? Is it more important for you to see as clear as possible the gauges, for example, in the sim, in the simulation? Or is it more important that you see more of this world and probably have a more immersive um, picture by seeing more? Again, that's up to you. You have to find out what yourself, what is more important for you. So as far as the visuals are concerned, for sure, you're going to get a better picture with the Reverb G2, but you're going to get a better FOV and a better refresh rate with the Valve Index. So I cannot um, claim that one head is better than the other. It really depends on you what is more important for you. All right, let's get to the controllers. And with the Valve Index, you will get this here, the Valve Index controllers. These are my personal favorite controllers on the VR market right now. And what is great about them, you will go into them like this and then they are attached to your hand. So you don't have to think about holding them and grabbing them all the time. And you can throw the grenade and all these kind of things. And that's simply amazing. Also, this has full finger tracking. So each of your fingers is tracked, which yeah, is very cool to see your fingers in the game. And that's something that the HP Reverb G2 controller won't have. So I don't have the controller here yet, but I'm going to show you a picture of the controller now so that you can see that it did change actually from the controller of the original G1. This was the original controller and it has this trackpad. So this is now gone. So the new controller of the G2, it achieves button parity with the Oculus Touch controller. So now you have uh, a thumbstick and you have two buttons. So it's easier for the developers to actually develop content for the G2 because they don't have to think about some special Windows Mixed Reality button layout. That's definitely good. It does look more comfortable than the original controller of the G1, so more ergonomic. But I do believe it's not going to be able to win against the Valve Index controller simply because, well, you don't have this function that you can open your hands and it's not going to fall out. Then you will not have full finger tracking with the with a G2 controller. So I don't think it's going to be better. Probably it's going to be pretty okay. And I'm going to show that to you. I'm going to review it here on the channel, of course, once I have it. But in direct comparison, I don't think it's going to win against the Valve Index controller. So definitely this is a win for the Valve Index. Now let's talk about audio. And as you can tell here, those two headsets, they are using exactly the same headphones. The HP Reverb G2 also uses the Valve Index headphones. They are off your ear, so they don't touch your ear, as you can tell here. And well, this audio solution is amazing. That is the best audio solution on the VR market right now. And I'm glad that HP actually uses this audio solution. So in this regard, both headsets are definitely winners. The last thing that I would like to comment on is comfort. And well, I can't really comment on it because I have never tried the HP Reverb G2. But I believe it should be quite comfortable since it's using the same kind of head strap that also the, the uh, Valve Index uses. However, the G2 is lighter than the Valve Index. So I believe you're going to get a really comfortable fit with the G2 and I don't think you're going to run into any problems with the HP Reverb G2. What I can comment on though is the cable length. So for the Valve Index, it's five meter plus one meter with the breakout box. And for the G2, it's going to be six meters. So in total, they are about the same length and six meters should be long enough. All right, I believe that now you have a really good understanding of the differences between the Valve Index and the G2. 
The Valve Index, in my opinion, still being the best overall headset, taking it all together with the best tracking, with the best controllers, with finger tracking, and with a really nice display with a bigger FOV. But we have a really strong contender now with the G2, with $400 cheaper, but offering a really nice picture, a better picture quality, even though the FOV is not as big, but lots of you might yeah, care more about the sharpest picture. Also good tracking and like a, a tracking solution that you can easily bring anywhere. So it's basically up to you what is more important for you, but now at least you can make a more educated purchasing decision. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, give it a thumbs up and of course, if you have not yet subscribed to MRTV yet, then do so now. Also, if you have any more questions, then please do leave your questions down in the comment section. I'll be more than glad to answer them. That's it for this video and I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode.